Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and this is part three for our RTS tutorial series, the real-time strategy game. And what we are going to be working on today is I'm going to go over a little bit of my thought process behind designing this RTS game and some tricks to help you guys design your games when you're building them that will make them easier to scale. It'll make it easier for you to finish the game, easier for you to build a large game instead of just a smaller one. So first thing we're going to do though is we're going to create a new object and we're going to call this object view controller. Okay? And I'm just going to give it a sprite of our mask just so that it's not white and I'm actually going to change the ship one here too so it's got this black sprite. And what we're going to do is create a new script. So that's this button right here, create a script. We're going to call this script control no script move view. That's good enough. So script move view. And uh, this is going to be a pretty straightforward code. We're going to do all right equals keyboard check vk right well we also want them to be able to so we're going to give them the ability to control the key the the view with the right key or the asdw keys so we're going to do an or which is a double it's the backslash but you hold shift and it just does these two lines and that's an or statement so the same thing as doing this so if you can't find those you can just do or okay so double keyboard check ord and then a single quote and then the D key which is the right and make sure it's capitalized it can't be lowercase and then just end those parentheses and do a semicolon so if you're using an older version of game maker this will not work this var right equals and some of you have run into this problem what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to copy this code right here and put it everywhere that I would have put var right or just this right. So you can still do it, it's just you can't do it this way that I'm doing it right here. It's just going to be a little harder. So copy this and we're going to do left, up, down, left. up and down and then we're going to do A W and S now we're just going to do a simple uh, code that moves the view so move the view according to the keyboard input this would be like get keyboard input and we'll just call this if right um, view x view zero so we're selecting the zero view and its x position plus equals four and then we'll grab this code and we'll copy it down four times and one thing you guys will want to watch is whenever I copy code like this you want to make sure that you change everything so this is going to be left and I mess up doing that too all the time up down minus equals four we need to change this to y and this to y as well and then down is or er, then up is going to be minus equals 4 as well so plus equals 4 minus equals 4 minus equals 4 plus equals 4 x view x view y view y right left up down awesome okay and in our controller we're just going to run a step event and inside of this step event we're going to drag over our code 
control the view and we're just going to run our script move view awesome so now you can see when we come into the room and really quickly I just want to uh, go over I did this in a previous video but if you go to the views tab you'll see we have enabled the use of views the view is visible when the room starts it is view 0 which is the one that we're accessing and the view in the room is 320 by 180 and the port on the screen is 640 by 360 and it's not following an object right now so that's important and I was supposed to actually put in this view controller object so put it in the room and I made it black which makes it impossible to see um, but you'll probably want to actually come in and uncheck visible on the, on the object as well so let's save and run the game and now we should be able to control the view so we can move the view around with the arrow keys and you can see we can do that we can grab our guy move him over there maybe move him clear over there and the room is super small so these objects are actually moving outside of the room we'll handle that later but for now it doesn't really matter so you can see we can move the view and it works pretty awesome so that's the programming part so the next part's going to have some programming but most of it is going to be uh, logic for the rest of the game so currently we have this generic parent object that is controlling both of the ships right and it does all these things right here that we've coded and we've gone over this together and I forgot to put a triple thing here so that's kind of annoying um, but what we want to think about is we do want a generic ship object like this but some of the things this does like global right pressed and global left released these actions are specific to the player's ship not to the enemy ship so we want a generic object but so, uh, some of the stuff that this is doing is going to be specific to the enemy ship too or not specific but part of the enemy ship like if we look at global ship in it the enemy ship is going to have a target it's just not going to be a target that we create it's going to be the player like the player's ships right and it's going to have a selected variable as well we won't be able to select it and move it but we'll be able to select it and maybe see its stats or see some information about it it will have a state it will have a speed it will have an acceleration all of these things that are going on with the with the player ship are also going to be going on with the enemy ship and even though this doesn't look like a lot of code right here duplicate code is bad so we want to try and keep track of what is going to be used by both player and both enemy ships and what is going to be used exclusively by player ships and exclusively by enemy ships so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this object ship okay and we'll call this object player ship okay and we're actually going to delete some of the events that are in here like we're going to delete the uh, the collision event okay because that is going to be something that every single ship object will do not just player ships enemy ships will do it as well so we'll leave the object ship to control collision events and we'll delete it out of here okay we're going to leave the draw in here and we're going to leave the step event in here and everything else looks good now give this a parent of the object ship so that it will still control collisions we're just going to let the object ship do the controlling of collisions and this is going to imitate that come into the object ship and now we need to get rid of everything that is player exclusive so let's delete the clicking event and make sure this is in the object ship and make sure you've duplicated it before you delete this and the left released and the dry event and the step event we're going to delete all of those and we're just going to leave the creation code which is going to be the same for 
or this code works for both players and enemies, and the collision code, which also works for both players and enemies. So this is going to be like our master parent. So now we're going to go into each of our other ship objects, and I'm going to call this object player worker. And I'm going to give it a parent of player ship instead of ship now. So it's got a parent of player ship who has a parent of ship. So it's going to inherit the properties of the player ship first, because that's its parent, but it will also inherit the properties of the object ship, the object ship, its grandparent. So we're going to do that with this one as well. Object player fighter. And we're going to give it a parent of the ship. And you can see that this object right here, our object player ship, is going to inherit the collision event. And it won't inherit the create event because it has a create event, but it will inherit the collision event. Okay? And this one right here, our object worker, will inherit all of these events from the player ship that we've created and the ones from the object ship. And I clicked on the wrong one, but you get the idea. So that way, if we change something in this, like let's say we find a glitch with our collision code, we only have to change it in this one spot. We change it right here with the collisions. And it changes it with every single ship that we have in the entire game. It fixes the collisions on every single ship. That's the main benefit of isolating your code like this and using parent objects is that you don't have to go in and change the collision event for every single ship because it's going to be the same anyways, right? So we might as well just have it in one spot and have them all inherit it. So hopefully you can kind of see the idea behind parent objects and why I would want to do this and why I'm so adamant about teaching you guys this because it is really, really important for you to know. If you don't feel like you understand all of it, that's okay. I just want to make sure that I'm kind of teaching you and it'll start to come as you continue to work with Game Maker. So, uh, one other thing that I want to do, well, I won't do it in this video because it's just mostly sprite work, but we'll start in the next video. We're actually going to start doing the, the enemy uh, code for the enemy ships and we're going to start doing some battle code so they'll start to fire at each other and maybe even potentially destroy each other so it's going to get really exciting in the next video and I hope you guys enjoyed this video be sure and like it, thumbs it up, share it I really appreciate you guys support check out the description, I've got my Facebook page, Twitter and Tumblr as well and mostly on those I'll do updates about my current project and in fact here pretty soon I'm going to be uploading a development log video of my current project so you guys can check that out if you're interested thank you guys again for all your support and I will talk to you guys later